Hi everyone, welcome back. So now we're going to do something called the TDS relations. Now, what are these? Well, they're these two little equations down here. Um, and they're very, very important. Um, just as a note, they're not important in this form. We use these to build something else. Now, where do these come from? Well, they're mostly from our definitions of work and heat transfer um, that we get these. The big thing is if I take that T at DS diagram, so this is temperature, this is entropy, and I showed you that before, that if I have a TDS diagram and I take the area underneath it, well, that area is actually my heat input or output from that. And so using that, understanding what work is, I can get an idea of how my internal energy or enthalpy is going to change as I either put um, energy into the system or take it out. Okay, now what do I actually use this for? Well, it's all for entropy analysis. So I can actually take those TDS relations, and for ideal gases, I can get these equations right here. Now, this is for variable specific heats. This is the exact analysis, and it's the way I can tell exactly how much entropy change I have from one state to another. The scary part of this, though, is that you have this integral right here. And nobody likes to do integrals. I'm all about escaping integrals if we can. And so we'll see how we can deal with that. One way we can deal with it is we can say, okay, well, rather than having variable specific heats, which is accurate, they do change over you know, a range of temperatures, I can say they're constant specific heats. This is approximate, but it can actually be fairly close to the right number. And just so you know here, when I say CP average or CP average right here, what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, the actual one, well, you change with temperature. However, usually that change for the range of temperatures we're dealing with is fairly mild. So what we can do then is we say, okay, well, yes, you do change with temperature, but we're gonna take an average right here. And also this is very exaggerated. So don't be looking like it's changing a lot. It, it changes very um, small amounts over the temperatures that we're actually be like dealing with. So, if my specific heat is an average, if it's constant with temperature, that means I can go ahead and take the integral, and that's where I get this term right here. I integrate this one, and it turns to natural log. And this is the equation, actually, on this right-hand side that I used in the last problem. Now, one other detail here is if I want to do it on a unit mole basis, I can also do that. Um, these equations look pretty much the same, except for I have a bar on top, which is telling me that's per unit mole. And also, instead of having the specific gas constant, I have my universal gas constant. Beyond that, everything is pretty much the same. Okay, so constant specific heats, we saw that being used in a problem. It makes sense because I can just find one value. What do I do about this integral, though, if I want to do the exact analysis? Well, the great thing is this integral right here um, has already been tabulated for you. So in table A17, I can find this for one of my... Um, ideal gases. And what you do is you look for a particular temperature and you can then find the value of just that integral section for that temperature. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well wait a second, I want S2 minus S1 and S1's at a hundred and well let's pick numbers right here. S1's at you know 300 Kelvin and S2's at 320. Um, but this is from zero here. I don't have the right integral. You need to realize that what you're doing effectively by having them both start from zero is that you subtract those two integrals. So if I have the integral from zero to 320 and the integral from zero to 300, when I subtract those, what I'm getting is more or less the integral from 300 to 320. So I'm able to do that and it comes out perfectly accurate. Now, when you're trying to find the entropy change from one state to the other, this was not the entire part of the equation. I had more of it. So to find my actual entry change, I have these two values that takes care of the integral. I find this in the tables. And then I have to also add on this last term that takes into account how the pressure is changing. And once again, I can do that on a unit mole basis if I want to. Now, just so you know, if I have small temperature ranges, like this is only a change of 40 degrees Kelvin, the answers are very, very close. So this one right here is the exact. This one right here is the approximate analysis. And you can see that that's within two or two ten thousandth. 
And so it is a very, very, it's almost exactly the same. Now, if I go to larger results, like if I go to like 500 or 600 or 700 Kelvin, well, then I'm going to start seeing bigger and bigger differences. And the accuracy of this method, uh, the approximate method, will start to drop off. Now, for you in this class, just look at the problem statement. A lot of this say constant specific heats, or I'll say variable specific heats, usually somewhere in the problem statement to give you an idea of which one it wants you to use. Okay, so I'll stop there for now. Just remember that these two values, these are in the tables, that's helping you to avoid the integral. And with this case, this is either in tables to find what these values are for your specific heat or your um, average specific heat, sorry, your specific gas constant or your average specific heat um, and everything else you get from the problem statement. So one or the other, you can use one or the other to solve your problems. Thanks for listening and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.